Michael Dunne, who has stepped down as the manager of the Galway Hurlers as well. I'm delighted to say Cyril Farrell is with us this morning to talk through us what exactly seems to have happened here. Cyril, good morning to you. How are you doing? Good morning, Ger. I'm very surprised by this. We, we spoke with Michal um, at the Galway races and he was very relaxed and very calm and, you know, he seemed already to be planning for next year. But um, what, what's your take on what's happened here? Yeah, it's big in the hurling circles down here. Jerry would be a very big surprise because, again, as you know, he's a, he's a relaxed, very composed person, very kind of organised and on top, on top of everything. And uh, everyone thought he was going forward again for another year or two. There wasn't any problem down, you know, that way as regards being... There was no nomination in it. He's, he's just carrying on his, his reign himself and his backroom team, Franny Ford and, and Noel Larkin, and the extra, the, the other, the more backroom team. There was no, there was no talk about him going or anything. This is quite a shock, I'd say, to the county board last night. Yeah, like when when we come to look at his career as manager of Galway, ultimately it will be defined by the fact that he did manage to win an All Ireland for the Galway Hurlers after such a long period of time, which marks him down as a, a really excellent manager. Yeah, like he, he, he clicked in All-Ireland uh, during the Aussie, the Leinster title and the league title and the Welsh Cup or two thrown in there, but he was very successful. And OK, like uh, in Galway, like, uh, they would, the, the expectations would be high every year to believe that to be there or thereabouts, which they would be OK. This year in is very, very kind of premature for him. That's the only year in his reign. You know, and everyone thought it was upwards and onwards again because it's, there's plenty of good hurlers in Galway and uh, everyone thought he's just carrying on. So it comes as a big surprise in the hurling world anyway. Yeah. Um this this year was obviously a very difficult year in terms of uh, not getting out of the round robin and like you don't want to put it all down to the fact that Joe Canning was injured but Joe Canning was injured and he's obviously such an, an important player for how the rest of the team functions um, it, it, is it possible he just felt like he'd taken that team as far as he could or that it's a reaction to what happened this year? Yeah, it's probably other things as well, Ger. Like you know, he'd have a young, he'd have a young family growing up, and he'd have like he'd be very involved in business commitments as well. Like, and it is a full time. It's it's getting the job, Ger. is getting the the time element is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and like and uh, to be successful anyway. And like I suppose he took all these things. He must have like it wouldn't be. It wasn't a decision he made. Uh, just a snap decision. Like you know, it's his decision really. Like and I'd say the board are quite surprised because they were quite happy to have, you know to let him soldier on and to back him as much as they could and. Uh, you know, now that the process starts all over again, but like, you have to respect his decision as well because he wouldn't have taken it lightly. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, what did actually go wrong for Galway this year, Cyril? Now that the the season is over, what do you think happened? Oh, well, like you know, like uh, I suppose, like you know, the scoring differences. It was a, it was a rare kind of circumstance, like scoring difference against Carlo, and it came down to the you know the the, the draw match between Kilkenny and Wexford. All these little things came to plus the fact that. Joe was injured and Conor Cooney was out for that match as well and Conor Guida came off there. Like, they're all, now Joe came on, but they're all three top forwards. You need everything going for you. And like, Dublin played very well on the on the night. Like, they were coming, they knew that to be a hard match in Parallel Park and uh, they also played a very hard match during the week. The, there was only six days in between against Kilkenny the, the, the weekend before. Like, so, all these things came to tell, like, and it came down to five marriages. But that's, that's the way the thing, that's the way it goes. Like, and I wouldn't think it was just that defeat or anything that, that, decided that it'd go like to be the overall thing they're there you know they're there since 2015 and I'd say they've lived every mo like you could nearly say 24 hours a day for that for that four or five years has been it's been kind of soaking up all and really yeah I, I guess that is something that we take a little bit for granted just the level of time and effort and energy and emotional energy that it takes to be the manager of an intercounty team when you look at the Tipperary backroom team, I think somebody said there was 27 and that there was certainly a picture of 24 people in the, uh, in the dressing room afterwards. And managing each of those individuals, as well as having an individual relationship with every one of the 40 members of your playing panel, that alone is a full-time job. Let, not, not to mention the bit where you're actually trying to come up with the hurling architecture and what your philosophy is and communicate that to everybody. Yeah, that's very true, Ger. Like, and uh, you know, it's it is a full time job. But everyone has these backroom teams now because everyone's looking for that extra inch to win. And uh, you know, the the winning is, is like uh, the winner takes it all. That, that's that's unfortunately the way it is. And the, the loser puts in as much effort as the winner. But like the winner takes it all. And the backroom teams are getting bigger and bigger. Everything is getting more sophisticated. And you're looking for that extra inch. And as you said, to keep them all happy, probably that uh, and probably the easiest time, uh, would you believe, Ger, in, in the whole setup is the match itself. But like. You know, all the training and all the different elements you have uh, going on every day and uh, every, nearly every night now. Like it's like not alone is the training nights, but off nights during the gym and they're they're doing kind of video analysis and they're in saunas and you know, everything is going on. So it's it's kind of it's it's professional sport now played by amateurs. So it's it's kind of a, it's complicated in the sense that it takes up so much time 
especially of the management team. There's no doubt about that. Does that mean that we're we're getting to a breaking point here, where it's only going to be uh, people who have jobs that are off for the summer, or uh, potentially retirees who are actually able to take the manager's job into the future? It looks like that, Jerry. Like unless you're very, very well set up, or else like that you take a uh, time out and maybe you get a sponsor for the year or somewhere to book it like that. Like, but definitely, like if you have a job. You know that 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 you're tired of kind of say nine to five, or you know that you have to work a certain time. It's different now if you're working for a company where you can kind of do a lot of work at home. But so all the jobs don't lead that way. But it's, it's nearly going to a full time job, and you'll find more and more like that. That's that's the way it's leading because unless they, unless Crow Park can put an embargo on it, and how do you do that? Like because the, the, every county board is raising money. It costs well over a million now to run a team in the year, like the team. So like. Uh, it's it's a big business. It isn't just a, it's an amateur game, but it's kind of sure it's kind of very it's going to a very very big business. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen, Sarah, with this? Because it's a kind of fundamental question that we've refused as a, as a society, as a country, uh, as an organisation in the GAA to, to answer over the last twenty years. I know Park Duffy tried to answer it one time when he floated the idea of uh, full time professional ref, uh, full time professional managers, but it got shut down straight away. Yeah, and so the thing is, like, uh, like it, it's it's kind of a. It's ambiguous the way things are going on. They say they're not getting paid, but to get expenses. And like everyone knows what it costs to run the county team, it's unreal. Club teams are drained only for the, the, the local lotters during the clubs. Uh, that, that keeps the club team going, and they're, they're hit in for kind of to, to buy tickets for a county board, which they have to. You have to support the county team, but it's, it's, it's a vicious circle, really. And like to succeed, you're going to have to spend, and you're going to have to have the, the players coming through as well. Like, you know, now the hurling is going well in the sense that there's six or seven or eight teams now that, could, that believe that they could win the Ireland, which is great. Like, they all have a shot at it. And like, with, with, with the All Ireland, which is now, Jerry, it's definitely harder to win it. There's more games. But it's also harder to lose. You can lose two, three times even though it's did win the All Ireland. So, like, it actually suits the stronger setups, really. Like, if you get into the knockout at all. So, like, it's, it, that's the way it's gone. I don't know who they're, they're going to look at it, but I don't know how they're going to stop it. Like it's like a, it's like a really trend. Really picked up speed, and they might stop for it. But it's, you know, it's, there's more and more going in, and you see the successful teams that have to go in. As you would say, like you know, I remember Liam Sheedy telling me that when he went back in, the biggest change. Oh, yeah, yes, have a second post for all the backroom team, and which is true. Like, but if you want to win, you nearly have to go that way. That's the way it is. Yeah, no, it's true. We, that second bus thing kind of brought it home to everybody. I think, in terms of the actual Galway job, it's a great job at the minute. There's so many good young players coming through. Obviously, the the minors being under 17 now for the last two years, and the previous year an under 18 team, but three all Ireland. There will there will be. You had hope, certainly, some of those players coming through in the next four or five years able to actually compete at senior level. So it's a really good job at the minute to be taking the Galway senior intercounty job. Who are the, the main contenders in your eyes, Cyril? Well, like, Gerard, it's a good job, but, it, but, but it, it's, it's great. It, there's great pressure on you, but it's fair because you're expected to deliver. Now, you're talking about the minors. They're, they're, they're good, but they're very, very young. But this lads, there's great hurlers as well between 20 to 22 or 4 that are kind of there playing club hurling and that kind of not not exposed yet to the to the to the higher level like you know so it, whoever comes in is going to have, you know have a look around now it's it's a big whoever whoever's going to take it job they're going to have to consider the time element have they got the time that's the biggest thing because if you haven't got the time if you're looking for time you're under pressure straight away look there'll always be people to take it like there's there's plenty of good coaches around I don't know the the board will probably go through a process you know setting up you know the usual thing and having the interviews the whole lot, the proper process after we followed and they'd hope I said they'd hope to have it as soon as they can. The club championship was up and running last weekend. Is that a good match this Friday and Saturday and like when you see the club hurling it's 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 very high standard here. Those that have been contentious as well as Jeffrey Linsky is over the under twenties, uh he's been around for a while there. Matty Kenny's name will come up again even though he's probably still cut out, he's probably still with Dublin. But all oh, there's plenty of fellas and someone will come out of the woodwork. Like you have the talent in Galway, it's really you have the pieces, Joe. It's a matter of putting the, it's like a jigsaw, it's a matter of putting the pieces together and getting them injury free. Is it important for you that it's a Galway man who takes the job? I would like I'd have no say in that. Like, you know, they could go outside the county. They did it before with with not great success, but fair success like they had, you know, but I would think that, you know, the way the way the way the different uh, squads are coming now, Joe, the emphasis would be on promoting your own because you have coaches come along, say with under. 70, you know, the under 17s, under 20s uh, development squads. There's less there to do a lot of work, and they'd probably be looking for a shot at it, like, you know, being, being homegrown. But, like, I don't know what way the, the board are thinking that, but they'd have their own they'd have their, their own opinion on that. That would be divided, I'd say, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cyril, it feels like there was unfinished business for me, although it feels like uh, Galway is losing somebody who understands exactly how that squad is set up and what their strengths and weaknesses are and who could actually have been leading them into the, the next couple of years. So I, I guess there's a bit of disappointment, maybe, that... Um, this decision has been reached. 
Oh yeah, I'd say the players are very disappointed because they they got on very well. He had a lovely, he had a good relationship with, with with the squad. Like he had a, he had a good squad. Okay, they got caught this year, but the last years have been like we've been kind of spoiled here in, in, in Galway as, as supporters for the last years because we've been, we've been there thereabouts. Like now you you won the one and you know you won your other and in in 2017 you were beat the point last year. Okay, you got knocked out here this year, but a lot of people give their a lot of comments give the right hand to be at at the, at the end of the, of the campaign. You know so. It was only kind of one blip. It wasn't that really. I'd say that decided. Maybe I'd say the time element is a big thing. Yeah. But like uh, the next time go, like to follow the team again. But you, you realise how good how how good the summers were when when you were kind of involved the whole time. Whereas this 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 summer has felt different. That that that, that you weren't going up to Crow Park shouting your team on. Yeah, Sarah. One last thing. I don't know if you had a chance to to listen to Richie Hogan talking last night about the the red card and the sending off and just the amount of time and effort and energy he's put into getting back to be able to play to take part in the parade on All Ireland final day. Uh, it took a, a fair amount of balls for him to come out and explain his side of things. Uh, when the dust settles, what's your take on, on on Richie coming out and also on the red card itself the weekend? Oh, well, Richie's a great sportsman and everyone knows that he's not he's not a dirty player. Like, oh, as far as to get the ball. Look, he just got his timing slightly wrong. He went in to kind of give a shoulder rat, which was perfectly fair. And, uh, you know, Barrett was set up for that. But then Carl took a step back, kind of avoided it. And, and he did, you know, he connected with the, with, with the jaw. Now, there was different angles on it. But you see, Jerry, like, the players kind of know and they have to realise the head tackle. And that's why, even if, you, even if you pull a fella's helmet now, that's a red card. You know what I mean? But the tackle where he, he just got the timing wrong, it was unfortunate. And like no one, I would say the referee was very slow. Like he, he, he talked to the lines man. He looked. He didn't act that fast. He, to me, he did the right thing because he settled down and had a look around and see what was happening. But no, no one wants to see. I'd say the ref didn't want to see him off at all. But like he didn't get to make that decision. It was tough on Richie Hogan. But I think for going back to the game, Joe, like if can he look at the game? That okay, there's a big say in the game because they're still in it. But like, I think if they look at the overall game, to realise that the tip will begin to come and get a roll on them. And what people didn't realise in Crow Park last Sunday, Joe, was there was a strong breeze in it with, with tip the second half. Oh, can can he have the first half not strong and, and driving rain? So they were, they were belting into that, which was hard. And once, kids, once tip got in a groove and got in a roll, they had have the stick hurl, stick pass, and beautiful stick stuff mm. to, to, to turn you off. And they did that. Like, they are capable of doing that. And they are very good hurlers. Like, yeah, no, no doubt about that, and that should really be the uh, the big story into the winter. Fair enough, Cyril. Good stuff. Thanks for joining us this morning. No problem, Cyril. Far there, giving us some thoughts on the fact that Neil Donahue has stepped down as the manager of the Galway Hurlers.